Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I want to talk about respectability politics and the reason I decided to make a video on this topic is because I came across a video of a black woman who sounded like a black man who hates black women saying that black women deserve to be disrespected and it was in reference to a video of a group of black women twerking at the Essence Festival. <sighs> okay. Now, I'm all for black women holding other black women accountable. In fact, I myself made a video speaking out against black women twerking in public. Not because I'm against twerking in general, but because I think that there's a time and a place. And I also made a video talking about me feeling like black women have to choose better partners um, in terms of husbands and the fathers of our children. And it was in reference to our mortality rate. So it's not like I'm opposed to accountability. I just personally feel like she was trying to pander to black men that hate black women because she was saying everything verbatim hateful black men say about black women. You deserve to be disrespected. No other race of woman does stuff like this. Firstly, yes they do. Other races of women also display self-destructive behaviours as well. Just say that you're willing to turn a blind eye when it's white women. Secondly, are you saying that black women deserve to face all of the adversities that we face concerning abuse, our mortality rate, the black femicide rate and our history, just because some black women were filmed twerking at a festival? And if so, would you say that because some black men might participate in socially unacceptable behaviours, for example, criminal activity, would you then say that they also deserve to be victims? Specifically victims of police brutality? I personally feel like because pick me culture is on the rise, certain women have become internet famous by pandering to hateful misogynistic men and in my opinion I just feel like she's just another one of them. It's common for every marginalised group to have individuals within that group that perpetuate the stereotypes. You could see tons of stories on the news of police officers killing unarmed black men and yet people typically tend to respond with, but not all police officers do stuff like that. You could see tons of stories of white women and false allegations and people respond with, yeah, but not all white women are doing that. You will be cancelled if you publicly voice Islamophobic, homophobic, transphobic and anti-Semitic propaganda. I feel like black people, in this case black women, are the only group you could just about get away with generalising. When it comes to other groups, we're able to recognise that it's just a vocal minority, but for some reason that goes straight out the window the moment it's black people, in this case black women. It's sad because not to be disrespectful to her, because this woman looked like she was 30, so you'd think that a 30 year old woman would be wise enough and smart enough to recognise that. This idea that if I set myself apart from other black women and pander to black men that hate black women, then maybe they'll like me. No. No, they won't. And that's why I want to talk about respectability politics. So what is respectability politics? The term respectability politics was coined by Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham, guys, please, if I've butchered her name, please forgive me, in her 1993 book, Righteous Discontent, The Woman's Movement in the Black Baptist Church. Respectability politics refers to a set of strategies employed by marginalized individuals or groups to gain acceptance and approval from the dominant society. It involves conforming to societal norms, values and expectations in order to be seen as respectable and worthy of equal treatment. The concept of respectability politics dates back to the early 20th century when African Americans tried to fight against racial stereotypes by presenting themselves as respectable law-abiding citizens. An example could be cultural assimilation. It aimed to challenge the harmful stereotypes by emphasizing socially acceptable behaviors. African Americans believed that by conforming to these standards, it would improve their worthiness for equal rights and opportunities. According to a 2019 study by Pew Research Center, black and Hispanic, Hispanic is not a race, are more likely than their white counterparts to say that they sometimes feel the need to change how they express themselves. In 1895, an African-American poet and novelist, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, penned We Wear the Mask, detailing the experiences of what it means to be black in America and needing to compromise one's true self in order to survive an oppressive regime. We smile, but O oh great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but all oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet, and long the mile, but let the world dream, otherwise we wear the mask. It's not 
that I'm against black men and women trying to counter stereotypes. In fact, I encourage black people present themselves in a respectful manner. My issue with the respectability politics is that it places the burden of social change on black people rather than challenging the racist system. It reinforces the notion that black people have to assimilate and act in accordance with what typically white people consider acceptable. Not to say that acting appropriately means that you're trying to act white because look i'll get to that point later i just feel like respectability politics is a form of victim blaming like this very idea that if black men and women just simply conduct themselves in a certain manner dress in a certain way or speak in a certain vernacular then they won't be treated like wild animals when we know that's not true because there have been countless examples of black people trying to conform trying to assimilate meanwhile we're still being oppressed it essentially blames us for our own oppression Another issue that I have with respectability politics is that it can lead to internalised oppression within the black community. When black men and women feel compelled to conform to certain expectations to gain acceptance, they may internalise negative beliefs about their own identity, which can then result in self-loathing and a disconnect from their own culture and their own racial group. And say black people do align with the respectability politics, can we honestly say that that will put an end to our oppression? More times than not, black people, specifically black women, dark-skinned ones at that, don't really have to do anything to get attacked. I honestly feel like stories that involve black people, black women, partaking in actions that don't do anything for our image are used to rationalise their hate for us anyway. Also, going back to the point I made earlier about the notion of acting respectfully means that you're acting white i found that respectability politics doesn't have to necessarily involve black people doing anything problematic it could quite simply be a black person practicing a cultural norm that white people deem unacceptable for example during the era of slavery black women were subjected to sexual exploitation by white slave owners because when they first came to africa they saw black women with limited clothing omitting the fact that it's hotter in africa than it is in europe also, it was a cultural norm. From then on, black women were depicted as promiscuous beings just for practicing what was the norm in Africa. Not for twerking, or wearing bonnets in public, or fist fighting, but for practicing what was a cultural norm. Something that they do till this day in certain tribes. And this essentially reinforces the idea that black women's bodies back then quite simply existed just for the pleasure of men. So you see, the disrespect of black women didn't start because we were twerking, or wearing bonnets, or being loud and obnoxious, it was because we were just being black women. And as time progressed, black women started embodying THOT culture because it was what was expected of us. If someone is being verbally abused and is constantly told that you're nothing, they will start to believe it and will eventually embody it. And I think that was the case with black women, the same with black men, deemed aggressive, savages, a danger to white women, just because of white women and their false allegations towards enslaved African men during that time and till this day it's this idea that black men and black women if you act like this then all of your problems will disappear you'll stop being oppressed disrespected and killed unjustly that's bs because they're always going to move the goalpost because if it's not this it'll be something else although i've expressed my dislike for the respectability politics this does not now mean i'm encouraging black people to participate in destructive behaviors in an act of defiance I'm for black people being the best versions of themselves so that we can build healthier relationships with each other and work towards trying to repair as much damage as possible that was left behind as a result of white supremacy. Anyway, beautiful people, thank you so much for listening. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the whole respectability politics being used as the answer to black people's problems. And if you like my content, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye!